Well, we're doing method of sections this time, another way to solve a truss. Um, but this method has an advantage over the method of joints. The method of joints requires you to work from one joint to the next. Every time you solve one joint, that will help you get information to go to the next joint. If I was in a large truss and I'm trying to find the forces in the middle of the truss, using the method of joints, I'd have to go A, B, L, work my way across the truss until finally I get there. Which isn't too bad on a truss like that, but what would happen if you're working on one like this? And you wanted to know what is the force in member G, I, you'd have to go A, B, C, D, E, F, and by the time you get there, uh, time's up. We're going to show you another method today, which is the method of sections. <coughs> both of these methods work, you can use them both at the same time. You can use them in combination. For example, you could work into the middle of the truss using the method of sections, and then you could use the method of joints to work other members in the middle of the truss. So both methods work. It turns out that the method of joints is a concurrent force method, and the method of sections is a non-concurrent force method. So let's have a look at the method of sections on this truss. <coughs> this is how it works. I've been told that I need to find the forces in these members, one of these members in here. Let's say it's member KJ. Instead of using the method of joints and, and working my way over there, I'm going to go directly to the centre of the truss. This is how I do it. I cut the truss in half, and this is a trick which engineers use, free body diagrams. A free body diagram can be anything you like. It's up to the engineer. For example, when I'm wor working out the reaction forces on this truss, I'm using a body which is the entire truss. Free body diagram for the entire truss. When I'm using the method of joints, I'm using a free body diagram of a single joint, which we did before. First job is to find reaction forces, we know how to do that. <coughs> Let's go and cut this truss in half. This time, I'm going to do a free body diagram of half the truss, like this bit here. So I'm going to cut the truss in half. I'll have the remnant of the truss looking like this. I have the left-hand side of the truss only. I've cut through three members. One of them is the one I'm looking for, which is JK. And I've also cut two other members because I have to cut the truss in half. So at the moment, I've got a non-concurrent force question with one, two, three, four, five, six forces on it. Six forces altogether. Out of those six forces, three of them I don't know. So I have a situation of a non-concurrent force question with three unknowns. Now, we've seen those before. I'll give you an example. How many unknowns in this question? There's one unknown there, that's a vertical force, and there's two unknowns here, a vertical and a horizontal. If this was joint a and B, then this would be reaction B in the Y direction, reaction A, Y, reaction A, X. How many unknowns in this question? I don't know this one, this one, or this one. Three unknowns. Three unknowns is a problem because we can't draw a force polygon with three unknowns, we can only draw a force polygon with two unknowns. So I have to eliminate one of the unknowns. How do I do that? What's the trick? for a non-concurrent force question. The trick is the moment equation. The nice thing about moments is you're allowed to take them anywhere at all and you should always get the same answer. Moments are not affected by your um, position. So if I take the moments here, I should get zero. If I take the moments here, I'll get zero. Wherever I decide to take moments, I should get zero. But it turns out that if I take the moments right here on A, then when I write my moment equations, sum of all the moments about A equals zero, I won't have to include these two because the distance is zero. So this will be RAY times zero and RAX times zero, etc., etc. Those two are not in the moment equation. So in, I end up with an equation based on finding only one force, reaction RB. We have our truss, we're going to split the truss in half and we're going to do the method of non-concurrent forces to deal with a portion of the truss. So here we have the truss, now we section the truss and we're left with this segment of the truss. We're, th we're now going to analyse this segment of the truss using non-concurrent forces. How many forces have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six forces altogether. Three of them are unknown. CD. CJ and JK. We know the direction of those forces because they're forces within members of the truss. So we know the direction of them, but we don't know the magnitudes. 
So we are basically doing a non-concurrent force question. Okay, how do we solve a non-concurrent force question? We try to find a point we can take a moment on which will eliminate two of the forces. Our first idea is to do a moment on point C. If we take a moment at point C, that will eliminate these two forces out of the moment equation. It will also eliminate the 10 kilonewton force because all of those three go through point C. So now when I do a moment equation, sum of all the moments at C will be 18.3 times 8, the perpendicular distance is 8. This is causing clockwise, so that's positive. 10 times 4, negative. That's anti-clockwise. Those three not included, and we have JK. The distance there is 4. And that's causing anti-clockwise, negative, equals 0. <coughs> So this moment equation has none of these three forces in it. It only has one unknown, this one here, and that's the one we're trying to solve. And when we do the moment equation, we end up with an answer of the force JK equals 26.67 kilonewtons. So we've solved one here, 26.67 kilonewtons for JK. Now I've solved one of the forces out of those three, I jump straight from the truss into the middle and I've solved JK directly without using joint to joint method. I'm left with two unknowns, CD and CJ. How do I solve those two? Well, I could use a moment for in different places to solve them, but there's a quicker way. We're down to two unknowns. When we have two unknowns, we can do a force polygon. Let's do a force polygon. Starting here, we go up 18, that's this one here. 18.3, we've got JK across here, 26. We've got 10 down, another 10. We've got, we got C, CJ, which is at 45 degrees, and this one, which is some other angle. And that solves our force polygon, CJ here, and CD here. Now it looks like CD's going the other way. It doesn't go that way, it's actually pushing the other direction. And that force polygon we c will solve all of the members that we've cut. So it, when we put the numbers in, so CJ is 14 kilonewtons, CD is 18 kilonewtons. We've completely solved that portion of the truss. If you went back to the original truss now, you could say JK, this member here has got 26 kilonewtons, this one's got 14, and that one's got 18. We've solved all of those. That's the method of joints. You cut the truss, you then find a place to take a moment that will eliminate two of the unknown forces out of the three. You do the moment equation, that will find the other member, like JK for example, and once you've got one of them, you've only got two left to go, you can finish it off with a force polygon.